<laughs> okay, Coach Burnett. So, do you know what to do with your hands? Uh, they start now. I'm not sure what to do. They wander up on uh, you. Okay. It happens a lot. I talk with them a lot. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I saw some awesome stuff tonight. Yeah. I saw the caterpillar. I've never seen the caterpillar here before. We had, seen the we, team push up. And... Yeah, we got that from Clarion. When I worked at Clarion camps back in the early 90s, uh, they did that there. We liked it. Okay, so we just talked about opportunities. With, I just talked to Mick. Right? I talked to Mick for like 15 minutes just now, mm -hmm. right? So Mick talks about opportunities. He talks about like the biggest thing in your parenting is how he, he didn't want him to have limited opportunities. You did not want him to have limited opportunities. Right. You limited some opportunities with some ACT, some academics, and you talk about that a lot too, right? Yeah, right. So like, what has it been like as a dad to be able to like not let your son make maybe the same mistake you made? I don't know, man. He's done a really good job. He's, he's, he, you know, as far as that goes, he's been pretty easy. You know, um, you know, with the wrestling and things like that, he had a rough year, his freshman year, with some uh, weight management issues, things like that. It's really the only time we we clashed. You know, I don't like if his grades dip here and there, but um, you know, it's maybe a comment from his mother, from me, and they generally come back up. So he's been he's been pretty self motivated when it comes to that. So I, I feel pretty lucky and, and, and blessed that uh, you know he's 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 been that type of kid. You and I were raised by like really hardcore blue collar guys, mm -hmm. just like toughest dudes you'd ever want to think of, right? When you look at that, like that upbringing and like your dad didn't want you to work in a steel mill. That was kind of like the biggest thing. My dad told me that I'd starve if I tried to be an iron worker or my family would, right? <laughs> so I, I appreciate the honesty, yeah, right? Yeah. But like how much has that molded you as a person and, and now as a father? Well, I mean, yeah, going to college was really never, never a question. Um, my mom and dad, you know, they, 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 that was just the way we were raised. We were going to go to school. And, uh, you know, we never knew any other way. So, so you know, despite the fact of making a mistake after mistake and whatnot, you know, I, Clarion gave me a shot. You know what I mean? And, and I, I'm, I'll be eternally grateful to Clarion. Look at that. I don't, I don't know what to do. My hands are moving around. But I'll be, you know, I'm, I'm going to be grateful to Clarion forever for, for giving me that opportunity, that shot. And they stuck by me. We had some ups and downs. I had some ups and downs. And, you know, Coach Bub, Coach Davis, and those guys, they, they, they stuck by me. And, and, uh, and Coach Nellis. And, you know, I, I managed to graduate and create opportunities for myself. And that's what I'm able to share with my son. You know, you create your own opportunities. When you talk about Clarion, I mean, it's such a dear place to you, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like an awesome place. I love going there, man. It was an awesome place. And, you know, talking about Coach Bob Bob, 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 Bob stuck with you, man. Yeah, he did. And it was like, you, dude, like, it was crazy because he, he could have given up on you. Yeah. And four-time state champs didn't generally wait till their fifth year to be All-Americans, right? That's right. So that was what was crazy about that. How did you ride that out and how did you survive that? And, like, what was the, the family support and Coach Bob's support like for you? Yeah, it never wavered. I mean, my family, you know, my dad was my coach growing up and, and you know, even through high school. You know, extra tournaments, freestyle tournaments, things. He was there. He would take me. So, you know, he always had some um, some input for me, you know, throughout throughout my my college career. Early on, I didn't, you know, he was he was he was critical and rightfully so. Um, not of our coaching staff, not at Clarence, but more of me. Um, we made we broke through um, in, in Clarence once my attitude got got better. Once my attitude got right. Um, we broke through, and, and we were able to do some things. The coaching staff was able to help me. You know, you, you can't help somebody who, who's not really wanting help, and uh, that's all the way around. And, you know, once, like I said, and I tell a story to the kids all the time about turning it around. You know, it's never too late. And, you know, for the last two or three years, you know, I really, really wanted to win, and I wanted to be a good teammate, and, and I, wanted to be, um, I wanted to be a good team member. And, but like I said, those guys, those guys believed in me, and, and they never cut me loose, and, and I, I, I got lucky. So what's the aha moment? Like we talked about this before. I talk about it with you all the time because you know we're good friends. But what's the aha moment or the where the like light came through and Eric Burnett believed in himself and like four and a half years of struggle and you don't know if you're gonna all American going in your fit. What's the aha moment for you, Eric? Just honest criticism and, and being ready for it and, and and dealing with it. And you know if you have a teammate or if you have a coach that kind of stands you up. You know, and, 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 and that's why it's so important to be a good teammate. And I, and I tell our guys all the time, you know, whether it's Team Ohio or Elyria or whoever I'm coaching or BTW, be a good teammate. You know, talk, talk to your, 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 your partners. You know, uh, I had coaches stood me up, said, hey, man, you're, not, you're, not, you're just not being a good guy. You know, hurtful to hear, but uh, you can be a little mad about it, pot about it for a little bit. But when you buy in and decide, hey, you know, these guys are right. And that was kind of it for me. You know, I had some talks with Kurt Angle and a couple other guys on our team and, and uh, you know, guys like Justin Kazemka and just really, really good teammates who, who, who saw some things in me and, and wanted to help me. 
Um, and once the buy-in was there, you know, things kind of took care of themselves. And I, I didn't finish on top. And I, you know, I didn't, I didn't win the whole thing. And you know, as I, as I got later in my career, I, I, I thought I was learning how to train like a champion. I thought I had done everything I could do to win it. But you know what? In the end, the fact that I worked that hard maybe is what got me on the podium, which is cool. I'm, I'm very proud of that. I'm, I'm proud of, I'm proud of graduating from college. To be honest with you. So, okay, so like you talk about all this stuff, all these struggles, and it's like you tell the Dave Schultz story where you saw Dave Schultz at the Braxville tournament, and he's like, hey man, uh, you're just not gonna work for us at Wisconsin, right? And that was like a great thing, right? It was your academics, it was your transcripts, and they couldn't take the chance on you and all that, right? Right, right, and he's very kind. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything you know, nasty or anything like that. It was just very honest. You know, and, and it was uh, one of those things where you're like, okay, and, and you know, you, you kind of, well, you're young and naive, so you don't really know how it's gonna happen, but then, you know, you, you realize the phone's not ringing as much as it was, and, you know, um, colleges, you know, back then, back then, they, they didn't want to take the risk, but it's even, it's even more hardcore now. These schools, they can't take a risk, you know, and like I said, even back then, even back then, you know, be, being a poor student with poor habits, you know, they, 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 they can't, they didn't want to take the risk. Now, it's even more so. I mean, you well, get the it. Social you media is a nightmare. The social right? media is for it's you a free as a coach show. and a dad. Right? Yeah, it's a free show for 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 the kids and for us coaches now. Um, but you can't, you know. I, I keep telling these kids, these, these colleges don't want to take the risk, man. You you have to be clean. You have to do things right, um, and you have to have good habits. You have to. And they're gonna find out. That they ask around. They vet the vetting process for that is like they can't take a chance, like you're saying. They yeah. literally have to do it. Okay. So I was talking to Nick about the reading thing, and the Tadaki and you are like on me. Mm -hmm. all over me you both buy me and my kids books to read yeah right the reading thing i asked him how huge it was and he talks about how the shoe went on the other foot and him and nate eventually started reading to you and janet yeah it was pretty awesome you uh and it's good night moon i haven't gotten yet or is it good night moon you got me good pizza night moon. i've got okay. peter rabbit from tanaki good night moon I, I, we have it but okay <laughs> pizza pat i'm gonna get it pizza um, pat. Yeah, we yeah. got good night gorilla good night zoo is the one we got yeah. we got the sandra boynton all the bunch of different sandra boynton yeah. ones obviously dr seuss yeah the dr seuss is phenomenal I love obviously dr. Seuss. um you know it got to the point where the kids were memorizing they were very young and they, they were memorizing the books and saying a lot obviously they weren't reading you know they were you know two two years old whatever but that was really really fun and it's time that um you know as a parent that you know you realize now the kid's 17 you know uh, you know mix 17 nate's 15 you know I, I i'll never get that back i'm glad we did that because not only do i think it was good for the boys it was good for us it was good for janet it was good for me it was time spent with our kids that um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just really glad we did it, you know. And it's like obviously paid off with their academics and, and not, and you didn't focus on athletics. No. Like being a D1 All-American, you'd think that like people were just crazy out of their minds pushing their kids into something. Nick just, he's like, yeah, my dad didn't push me into wrestling. We chose it. Yeah. Right? And I think a lot of that was you immersed them in the, your, your dad's around it, your dad talks about it, you're at the camps, they're at the camps. I think immersing them in it, you're a coach, they're at the practices, they're at the meets. I think that's what happened. Right? It's a product of that, right? Yeah, and, and I'm just glad that they fell in love with it because, you know, they could have just been, you know, if, if, hey, if you don't have somebody to watch the kids, they get brought to the tournament. But we had, on the contrary, we had so much support between Janet's parents and my parents and, and, and just family in general who could have watched the boys. The boys, even when they were very young, you know, if they wanted to go to the tournament, they, they, they wanted to go, you know, and they, and they got around it. And they were in our room a lot. Um, they, were around, they were around our high school kids. and. Man, I'm very thankful to have some really, really good role models for my sons at Russell Little area. You know, guys like Nico Odor, um, you know, Ben Darmstadt, guys like Armando Torres. You know, th these guys were, were just amazing role models for, for, for my boys. And, th and then our club guys, you know, guys like Nathan Tomasello and the Stever brothers and Cam Desari. I mean, we got pictures with these kids when my kids were little. And my, my boys looked up to them, and, um, and we were just fortunate to have them have, them have good role models. Okay, so the college process has begun for you, helping helping your son, guiding him through. He's, he's a guy who's been in the Fargo finals for Cadet Freestyle. He's a he's a top one hundred recruit. He, he's a legit guy. He's a D one guy, right? Um, so guiding him as a parent, as a coach, as a financial aid provider, all that stuff. What do you want parents to learn from what you are learning right now, as, as a as a coach and a parent? It's going to be what they want, okay? And that that is that is the key. It's what they want. You know, if there's some debt, if there's going to be some debt involved, and, and and it's okay, it's going to work out financially, things like that for them, uh, for the family. But it's but it's what they want. It's the place they want to go to. It's where they're comfortable. You know, it's got to happen. It just has to happen. You can't produce academically, athletically, or socially anywhere if you're unhappy being there. So that's been the biggest thing, and a lot of dialogue 
uh, between between Mick and, and myself and between Mick and his mother. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just a lot of that. You know, helping them prioritize. You know, they know their priorities. We have to help pull it out of them. You know, we have to help. We have to see is distance a priority. Um, obviously, academics is a priority. You know, um, you know, at, athletics. You know, certain uh, concepts and, and things that uh, programs do. You know, what, what's important. Just trying to put little things together, maybe little grids together, and say, hey, let's let's figure something out here. We're trying to help with that, but it's ultimately going to be where he's most comfortable and, and who's who he is most comfortable with. That's key. You know that. You went to Kent. You went to college. You know that you have to be comfortable with, with where, where you're at to, to succeed. Piggyback off that, we all know I'm the Kent State homer. Everybody knows that, but like, I don't care where your kid goes to school as long as it's the right fit for him, right? Yeah, I love right. the Burnett's I land traffic for him. Do you have a preference? Do you, do you care? Um, every coach, let me, let me say, every every coach, every place, every school that he's interested in is incredible. Okay, we're talking about coaching staffs and and, and wrestlers who are, who are amazing. I, I would be I would be more than content with any of the places that he's looking at. Um, and, and that's just that's just a straight, honest, straight. I, I can't be any more honest than that. Um, they're they're all incredible. And and once again, I feel I feel very. I feel very lucky and very blessed for, for my kid to have these opportunities to be with these people, you know, and um, it, it's been amazing. And, and I, I know it has been for him, which is most important, obviously. But even for me as a dad and Janet as the mom, we've, we, we've learned so much. And it's just, these are incredible people. I, I would be okay with anywhere he goes. All right, being fair and balanced, not letting Nate feel left out. Mm -hmm. Bringing Nate on the visits, mm -hmm. letting Nate see. Mm -hmm. You know, Nate's just a freshman, rising sophomore, mm -hmm. state placer as a freshman. He's pretty good. Yeah, yeah right. He's, he's gritty. What's it like having involving Nate in all of it? Yeah, well, Nate's going to what he's wanted to go to. Uh, we haven't forced him to go to anything. You know what I mean? If he if he wanted a weekend off and didn't want to go somewhere, he could go. You know what I mean? Because that that I don't want him. I don't want a college visit experience to be a dreadful experience for him. I, I want him to look forward to his own time. You know, he's chosen to go to a couple of places and he's had a blast. You know what I mean? But it's like, it, he's going to be on his own journey. You know, we talk about our journeys all the time, right? You know, my wrestling career is long gone. It's long over, over, over with. Now he's on his journey. Nate's on his journey. They're all going to be, they're all going to be different. You know, so so Nate has gone wherever he's wanted to go. And, and he's a different type of wrestler and he's a different type of kid than Matt which doesn't make him bad by any stretch. You know, Nate's got a, got his own unique sense of humor. You know what I mean? He's got a, a different style of wrestling in there. You know what I mean? He's different academically. I mean, the guy who loves history, loves talking about World War II. He, 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 I mean, he's, he's just got so many other, uh, other um, little attributes that make him an individual, and, and like, like I said, as a dad, uh, I couldn't be happier with what he's doing, you know? We, we also determined that he's full Burnett Caveman with the challenge of Jack tonight. With yeah, the yeah. Fun. Sometimes not a no lot of fair common child. sense. Yeah, None. Not, not a lot of fair Burnett. child there. A lot of common sense in a fair child family. Um, <laughs> not much over on our side if you go by what just transpired in there. <laughs> yeah. But Nate's a unique guy and he's it's gonna have his own journey. Yeah, he's a he's a positive rocket. He's he's okay. You know, so and he's grinding and he's working hard and he's giving freestyle a really, really honest go. Um, and he's had a nice spring and looking forward to Fargo and like I said, once again, didn't force him to do that. Um, he's come to his own conclusion that, he, that it's something that's going to improve his wrestling, so I, I just think it's phenomenal. Okay, Cam, so last thing I got to let you go. I know you got a job to do here. Um, you doubled, you've doubled the size of the, the wrestling room. Um, it looks like there's big things on the horizon. I know you're not like this crazy entrepreneur businessman. You just love wrestling. Um, it was inevitable, I thought, but you guys have doubled the size of the room. You got new mats in there. This thing's taken off. I mean, but why are the camps finally blowing up, and why are we doubling inside? Yeah, you know, I, it's one of those things. Uh, Artie and Amy uh, Wolf lost their minds, man. I mean, they went out, and, you know, Artie hits me up back in, like, December asking me for a logo, a BTW logo. And I'm thinking, okay, he's going to make a sign. You know what I mean? Had no idea. And then in February, we're out here running a practice, and one of the dads pulls me out, one of the dads that lives around here, pulls me outside this door, and he goes, look at those. And I'm like, wow, Artie had ordered new mats. So they were just out here, already waited uh, until the season was over, and then uh, we came out and we rolled them out, and man, are they magnificent. They, they're awesome. Um, no flex roll. Yeah, man. Um, they didn't even have, they didn't have the powder, the talc on them. We didn't have to mop them for two weeks, flip them over, anything like that. We rolled them out, put them in. Um, bang. That, we're banging. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and I mean, we're, we're, so, we're just so, we're so lucky, man. Um, 
that, that we have Artie and Amy in our corner like that. You know, Ohio Dogs, uh, back in the day, it was the Jeff Steber thing. And, and uh, you know, they, they, the, the Dog's logo is on those mats as well. And um, it's just a really, really, really cool thing. Why are you such here. an easy guy to get behind? Like, we're talking about this and, like, there's there's zero snake oil salesman in you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it, why, is that why you're so easy to get behind, you think? Yeah, I, I, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, you know, it's because it, I, it's always about the kids. For us, it's always it's always about the kids. Most people are like that. Most people are like that. I don't want to say it's you know it's just us, but that, that's just how it is. You know, and it, it, it because of the way Artie has set this up for us, Artie and Amy, the way they've set it up for us. Pie been, for the same well, way. Well, Piecraft's were exactly the same way. The, the original barn, Jim and Donna Piecraft. The way they had it set up is we we were able to do some things for people. You know what I mean? To maybe help out. You know what I mean? In a pinch, things like that. Um, to, for camps, you know, so may, maybe make it more cost effective for people, things like that. Um, it's always about the kids, and, and you know, money, money can, money's nice. It's nice, and it's obviously helpful. But you, you know, if money interferes, okay, with the progression, with the progress of a kid, then that's not a good thing. So, so we're, we're lucky to have the setup that we have. You know, why are the camps getting bigger? Um, I don't know. You know, Scotty's doing a lot of work out in out out, out west. Okay, we're, 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 we're chugging along over here. You know, ki kids are wrestling our kids and, and they're wanting to commit. They're wanting to come in for a week or maybe two weeks, things like that. Um, you know, we put these mats in here. You know, if you get a few teams interested in coming to, to, coming to a camp, you know, you got a team bringing in 20, 25 kids, that's huge. You know, and you do the best you can and you hope they have a great experience and maybe they want to come back. And, and some guys, some teams just figured out, wow, man, this wasn't, this wasn't it for our team, for our team. Okay, so maybe the team doesn't come back the next year, but maybe three or four individuals on that team want to come back, right? So it's cool either way for me. I just want to train kids. I love it. Well, that's a pretty simple philosophy. Right, right, right. I want to train kids, whatever happens, happens. That's right. All right, we got to go get pizza and do a bunch oh, yeah. of other stuff. You got anything else for me? No, man, love what you do. Love what you do and, 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 and keep doing it. And you, man, I fo follow you guys on social media, you and your little boys and Sarah. And it's, it's just, it's awesome to so keep sharing, please. Hey, thank you for the time. Thank you for the books. Thank you for the advice on reading to my kids. Hopefully it pays off. I don't know if they're going to be Nate or uh, I don't know if they're going to be Mick geniuses or if they're going to be Miller, full Miller cavemen. Like, I don't know. I might, I might have a similar situation. But... You got a good mix going on, bro. All right. Well, thanks <laughs> for the time. Good, good luck with the poor coach. Right on.